Boardroom Bound, Episode 63, A New Way of Managing the Boardroom, with Jeb Banner. A for-profit board usually has different needs than a non-profit board. They need more collaborative tools around building documents. They need digital signature functionality. Uh, They need different levels of security. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Boardroom Bound. My name is Alexander Lowry, and this is the podcast dedicated to intentional leadership in the boardroom. My goal is to give aspiring and existing directors the tips, tactics, and strategies necessary to transform your confidence and build a successful career as a board director. Quick reminder, you can get all of today's show notes at podcast.gordon.edu. In today's episode, we're speaking with Jeb Banner. He is the CEO and founder of Boardable, which is a board management software purpose-built to help nonprofit boards of directors centralize all their communications and activities. Think about it as if you are on a public company board, Coca-Cola, JP Morgan, you have probably one of the leading solutions by Diligent or Board Vantage, something like that. You don't need all of those bells and whistles and all that security nonprofit, but you want something to be efficient and effective. We're going to hear from Jeb why he built this company, the solutions that they bring, and why it's a very cost-effective way that helps nonprofits scale and do their jobs really well. And it also helps all of us thinking, maybe I want to be from the nonprofit I'm on today to a public company board. How do you take this information and use this to help yourself be prepared for the next round of interviews? Let's jump into the show. Jeb Banner, welcome to the Boardroom Bound Podcast. Thanks for having me. Well, delighted to have you here today because I think there's a tendency on this show, and probably when most people talk about boards, to think about the for-profit space. And there are a lot of reasons to do that, but there are also a ton of organizations in the nonprofit space that would also say, but don't don't forget about us. We need help, we need guidance, we need insights, we need tools. And I think that's a wonderful reason to have you on the show today to talk about Boardable and what you guys are doing to arm those organizations to be effective and engaged. But before we jump into that, I'd love to set the scene for our audience. You come from a very entrepreneurial background before you got to this point. Can you sort of paint the picture for our audience of sort of briefly what your background was, how you got to this position today? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, Boardable is the fourth business I've started, the, the previous three were in completely different space. I had a service business before this that uh, worked primarily with nonprofit organizations, a creative agency called Smallbox. My wife took that over after I uh, left to run Boardable. And before that, I was involved uh, with an auction house that I co-founded and then an eBay consignment company before that. So I've jumped around a little bit uh, through my entrepreneurial career. When I was at Smallbox, I was involved in starting two nonprofits. Uh, the first one is called Musical Family Tree, which serves Indiana musicians. I'm uh, really trying to come in there and give them exposure and resources, uh, along with an online archive for them to post their music. Musicians that aren't signed to a record label and don't have that kind of support. Uh, so I served as board chair of that nonprofit for a number of years until I was able to roll off the board. Uh, it continues to be a nonprofit serving the community. And then uh, a second nonprofit called the Speakeasy, which serves the entrepreneurial community. It was the first co-working space here in Indiana uh, back in 2011 when it launched, and I served as board chair uh, for a couple of years there after co-founding, and then rolled off. And those experiences, along with a client of Smallbox, is the United Way of Central Indiana, who came to us requesting a board portal, uh, really informed Boardable. Uh, the four founders uh, came together, and we identified that there was an opportunity here to build something that was easy to use, affordable, and purpose-built for nonprofits. And uh, we knew the problem ourselves because we all had a background uh, starting and, and serving nonprofits. And I, I would just love to paint the picture for our audience for, and nonprofit can be a wide range from perhaps a small mom and, mom and prop or a recent startup to really professional organizations like the American Heart Society, the YMCA, all sorts of large and small organizations, different size budgets, different size boards, different levels of maturity around it. And I imagine you guys are targeting probably the first half in someone's development who want to do really well, want to be really successful, and are probably still figuring out how to do that, but probably also in a really tight budget. Is that right? That's a good chunk of our customers. Um, If you look at the U.S. nonprofit space, there's about 1.8 million nonprofits, and two-thirds of them are under a million. That's often in terms of annual operating budget. That's usually considered a grassroots nonprofit. About 
half our customers fall into that category. The other half are in that million plus range. We have some customers, a hospital, school system, doing tens or even 100 million plus in annual budget. Um, so we're built really to scale nonprofits as they grow. Uh, we're built to scale around users, around committees, even around instances. So you can have more than one instance for different uh, affiliates within your nonprofit or different boards. So say if you're a foundation, you have different funds, for instance. Um, but yes, we serve that, that group that often falls between a half million and 10 million in annual operating budget. Uh, we like coming in early if we can to help them grow and professionalize the board experience, but we're happy to work with them at any level. And you were sharing with me before that this is a a, a large entity that you serve. It's a thousand organizations or so in 25 different countries. So not just uh, the area in Indianapolis where you are, but you're doing this around the world for people of different sizes and scopes. And I imagine you've gotten probably lots of great feedback about, thank you so much. We needed this. This is a tool. Help us understand that, right? Because we, there are some wonderful organizations that are for-profit companies that do this for, let's say, some of the most professional boards, like a J.P. Morgan Chase. That is probably a very expensive tool, lots of bells and whistles, maybe not what some of the organizations that you work with need. Can you help us understand the differences? Yeah, absolutely. So a for-profit board usually has different needs than a nonprofit board. They need more collaborative tools around building documents. They need digital signature functionality. Uh, they need different levels of security. Often, I often compare what a corporate board or a publicly traded board is to a nonprofit, a community nonprofit board, and security level is more Fort Knox versus local bank. Uh, they need a lot of things locked down to make sure that no one has access that shouldn't have access. Um, but that being said, there's a lot they have in common. They all need to be, uh, they're both meeting centric. They need to be able to have meeting landing pages for RSVPs, upload documents, have attendance, agendas, minutes. So there's a lot of things that cross over, but we feel uh, that that nonprofit customer, that's really a, the mission that we follow, uh, is the one that's being neglected currently in the marketplace. There's plenty of folks serving those large for-profit companies, uh, and of course they're paying often tens of thousands of dollars a year for a solution where we start well under a thousand. And I can imagine this for myself. So I'm on one of the 30 largest YMCA's in the country, but still not the world's biggest organization. And there is a lot of behind-the-scenes manual work that goes on by our amazing executive director and some of her top team to pull together the quality information as well as some of the volunteers that are on the board. And that takes a lot of time. And nonprofits are not usually known for having lots of extra resources lying around. So I imagine one of the things that you are offering to people by bringing this solution is time back, is energy, is resources. Is that right? Absolutely. Uh, we're looking to free up that administrative uh, resource, whether it's the executive director or the admin working with the, the executive director and the board, to give them more time back to do the things they need to be doing. Often that's fundraising or meeting with uh, the people they serve, working with their team. A lot of what we do in the product is automate things. So uh, we integrate with calendar systems so that when a board meeting is added, it goes right into a calendar. We uh, automate reminders so that, you know, that's going right out from the system. So a lot of the tools that we built into Boardable to really uh, accelerate and simplify that administrative uh, burden while also giving more control to the board member who so often wants to have access to these things but is waiting on the administrator or has to go through the administrator, emailing them, calling them. Now they know they can go and log into one place. So we often hear from our, our customers that the, the board is so much more engaged, things are so much easier now, and they have time back they can now use on more valuable areas of the business. And I imagine along the way, as the product has grown and evolved, you've heard about a lot of pain points from nonprofits and clearly trying to solve some of them. There's probably some others down the line. Some of our audience might be new to being on a nonprofit board. Can you give them a sense of what they're going to experience and maybe the ideas about the best ways to solve some of those so you can get back to what really matters, whether it's thinking about the strategy for the organization or fundraising like you talked about? Yeah, absolutely. There, there's a number of uh, challenges of serving a nonprofit board. I think so often uh, expectations are not clear. Uh, no 
no one really, uh, there's boards that do this right, boards that don't do this right, but often nobody sits down with a board member and says, this is what it means to be on the board. This is what your term looks like. This is these are the expectations, the role you're going to play. Uh, they often just show up to the meeting and they kind of have to feel their way in the dark. Uh, and that leads to a very um, rocky onboarding experience, which is not a good way to start. And then as they go forward, uh, they want to contribute, they want to give back, um, but they're not necessarily uh, being uh, you know, shown the way. How do they fundraise? What tools are they being given? Um, do they have a toolkit to, to reach out to people for, for donations? Um, are they being educated? It's really a sales job, you know, fundraising. Uh, that's often missing in a lot of board experiences. But then from our perspective, we look at it through the lens of board engagement in terms of what can we measure in the product. We think about our board members prepared for board meetings. So that's part of the board uh, administrator's job to make sure that they're getting materials in advance. That's also on the board member to make sure they're spending the time to get ready for that board meeting. Um, are they attending meetings? Are they participating in meetings? Or just sitting there on their phone as so often is the case? Are they following through on what they said they would do? So that account of the accountability piece is very important. Are they volunteering, getting involved in the organization? Are they advocating on behalf of the organization? And then finally, and very importantly, are they then donating and fundraising? So those eight areas are what we look at for, for an engaged board member. And as we build up the product, we're seeking to measure those so that the organization's visibility into how engaged their board member is. I think that's invaluable, and I'd like to explore it a little bit more because we've just had a mini-series on the board composition matrix, and you can argue the pros and cons of it, but what it should do is allow a board to step back and say, what are the ideal sort of skills and values that we need as we think about our strategy and how we execute that, and then you can compare it against who do we have today, so where might be gaps? And if you think about a nonprofit versus a for-profit board, you're probably having a much larger board in some instances because it's about fundraising Mm -hmm. and different types of people. Some people are there to donate or to fundraise. Others are there to be the leaders. Others might be key volunteers. You have different constituencies around the table. And I think your idea that we're trying to collect data, not only about the organization, but about the board. And I would, I would personally say one of the failings, I think, for a lot of public company boards is the board does not get evaluated like everybody else in the organization does. And it sounds like you guys are trying to address that. We're definitely heading that direction. We have three layers to our overall product strategy, board management, which is the logistical piece, uh, the meetings, the back and forth, all that, uh, board engagement, which it gets more into the behavioral piece, and, of course, measurement. And then board talent, which speaks to what you mentioned, which is that more of that skills matrix, along with making sure that you have a diverse board. Uh, you know, that's a challenge with a lot of nonprofit boards. Uh, they end up not looking a lot like the people they serve. So do you have a good mix of racial, gender, and age in terms of the diversity of the board? Uh, so those are the three things we're looking at, management, engagement, talent, as we continue to execute on the, the vision of the company. And Jeb, I imagine some of what might happen is an organization signs up with you perhaps just for the board management, knowing they need to solve some of those logistics. Taking that stuff off their plate allows them to, I'm going to call it, step up to the next level and begin to think more strategically, not about the organization, but also the board. And let's take the talent, for example, because if you don't have the right people around the table, you can't have innovative thoughts, you can't engage with the community in the right way. Do you guys see that measurement? Do you get that feedback? We're working towards that. So that's something that we have not built yet. That's part of our vision. But we are beginning to um, build the foundation to have that in the product. Uh, For instance, after a board meeting, we want board members to give feedback to the administrators on on how engaged they were in the board meeting. That's really critical feedback. We also want to have tools where the board members can evaluate uh, the executive director of the leadership. And then it's the vice versa, that self-evaluation. Um, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, So we see a lot of opportunities to begin building these tools into Portable as we go forward, just following that that pain pain point you mentioned there around, uh, you know, what we consider professionalizing the board. As you professionalize the board, uh, the board becomes more engaged, the nonprofit gets more value from the board, and overall the organization becomes healthier. 
It's interesting when I compare what you're talking about with my own experience on this YMCA board, which is very well run. We do an annual survey using a Google form where we're getting everybody's feedback about how we gauge where you were this year, what were the right topics, how do we plan for next year, and that's very good. That's great best practice. It takes work for someone to implement that to design it. So much the better if we were all using a certain tool anyway, and it was in there, it was more easy and more effective. I can see how that adds a lot of value for an organization. And I guess we should also paint this scene. If someone was on, you know, a Coca-Cola or J.P. Morgan type board, you're probably going to be given an iPad owned by the organization, which has all the security on it, and your thousand pages of board document is going to show up there automatically when you need to read it, versus a nonprofit where you're probably going to get an email that comes out a day or two before the meeting that you've got to read. Hopefully it doesn't get lost in your inbox and you can find it. I imagine you're helping organizations solve a lot of those. Yeah, we're really in that middle space. We're definitely not on the, the high-security, uh, custom iPad side of things. That's not really affordable or needed. But uh, we, what you described earlier, we call digital duct tape. Um, <laughs> taking email, uh, Google Calendar, Outlook, Google Fold, uh, Dropbox, or Google Drive. These free to cheap tools and sort of taking them together into a solution that solves today's problem, but it does create a mess down the road. I know this because I've created the mess and used those tools. <laughs> uh, you end up, uh, at one point I couldn't find the bylaws for the nonprofits I, I co-founded. Uh, they were in somebody's inbox that had rolled off the board. Um, so, you know, a lot of boards are just sort of, you know, hopping through, just limping through um, to just get through the day, get through the next board meeting. But when a new board member comes on, they're completely lost. They don't have the history of the organization. They cannot see past decisions, minutes, discussions. Uh, and to have a place where all that's being captured, it's essentially building that story of the board as you go so that you can hand that story off to future board members. There should, shouldn't really be the same board today as there is five years from now. It should have that turnover. So you need also consistency. And I think that is a an underappreciated uh, problem because if I compare it to my board in the YMCA, we have four members this year who will finish their third three-year term and they will roll off the board. The history they have is incredible and it's in their brains and we will try to get it out. But the parallels in the real world, if we go to, say, the consulting world, you have McKinsey, probably arguably the greatest strategy consulting firm, and Accenture, probably the greatest IT consulting firm. And Accenture has a giant database and Every piece of data and history and information is all included in there. So if someone leaves, everything can be found there. In McKinsey, it's a lot more in people's brains because that's the way that they sell them. If someone walks out the door, a lot of that history often goes along with them. So what you're talking about is typical for anywhere in the business world, and it is a real problem. And the fact that you're solving that is incredible for a nonprofit, especially if you think, say, the executive director might leave and the history that they would have with them. Right, right. Absolutely. That continuity challenge is a real problem with nonprofits. And so often that, that knowledge just walks out the door and no one captures it. It's better to capture it along the way. Well, well, Jeb, when you think about the evolution of the organization that you're building and the solution that you're providing with Boardable, you've clearly identified some things that you've already solved, some that are on the way, but you're probably also looking towards the future and you're realizing different challenges. And we can talk about some things that will be the same, but on different levels, like cyber is a risk for anybody, but the order of magnitude is very different. When you look towards the future and what you want to produce and provide for nonprofits, what do you see the focus that those organizations should be thinking about it, and how are you going to be playing in that? Yeah, security is always a concern, um, but it's less of a concern for nonprofits as it is for for profits, as we discussed earlier. Um, I think that the, the biggest challenge I see most nonprofits having is getting the right mix of talent. You mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, it's really a, a challenge because these people are not being compensated as they are in a for-profit board. But you do need to make sure that you have the right mix of fundraisers, fundraisers on the board, the people that are on the board because they can either write checks or tip checks, along with uh, subject matter experts. And I think that um, with so such a high demand for board members, what I often see happening in communities is you have a very small population serving on the boards, like a thousand people basically sitting on all these boards, and often they're on two to three boards at a time, and they're overburdened. So we see that there's a need to bring a, a new population of the next generation into board service. And we also think that board service is a wonderful way to advance your career. Uh, it's a way to network and connect with people uh, in, in a very, um, uh, you know, cause-driven way. So you're not, like, out there at a networking event. You're actually there working together, solving a real problem. But in doing so, you're building relationships 
career. So from our perspective, that talent piece is more of a long-term challenge. The other big challenge, I think you know this, maybe maybe you've listened to this before in previous um, episodes, but uh, was a decline in the overall number of people giving. Uh, and that's a real challenge. So that, that number is going down. The dollar amounts are about equal because there's some major gifts that are being given out there by super wealthy donors that sort of tip the scales back up. But that's not necessarily sustainable. So we need to bring more people, uh, especially the Gen X and millennial generation, into board service and into the nonprofit volunteer ecosystem. And right now, um, I think that the current way it's structured, is there's no clear front door to getting involved, and we need to make that a lot easier for that generation, those generations. Well, Jeb, I wonder if also, just picking up on that point, if you think about the younger generations and the way they use technology and the way they approach collaboration in business, whether your boardable solution is also a fit for them because it would be more um, the way that they would think about the way things should work. Have you seen that by different age, perhaps, brackets of the users that you're seeing on board members? Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, You know, we have seen boards with, um, you know, a lot of books, Boomers on the board really take the boardable very quickly, and we've seen some with millennials struggle a little bit. Uh, we've, but you know, overall, I would say it's true that um, the younger users, the millennials, Gen Xers, they're more digital native in terms of their disposition, uh, and so they typically can jump on the, the platform very quickly, download the app, start using it. They get it. And we've built the product in a way where the board member doesn't really need any training. We do the training with the administrator who's really creating the content and experience for the board member. Um, so, yes, I do think that as technology improves, and this is generally a challenge in the nonprofit sector, and part of why we went into it, is that it doesn't get the same quality of tools that the for-profit sector does. Um, so for-profits get these really nice, fancy tools, Nonprofits often don't get the same level of investment, and we saw the opportunity to come help that sector because we felt like there was it was not being served in the way it should be with really easy to use, high quality cloud based software that that we uh, aim to build with Portable. And Jeb, the way you've described it, it sounds like great value for money, a low cost point, which is clearly targeted at your market so people can use it and make a difference in their organizations. Give us a sense for what it, it would feel like you might have people who are listening, who are on board, thinking this could really help us. The timeline from having a first contact with you to implementing it, the learning curve around it. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are a self-service product, and that, that's intentional, so similar to a company like Dropbox or Gmail, uh, you can go to our website, you can sign up for a free trial, use the product for 14 days, there's no commitment, you don't have to put a credit card on file, and then at the end of that period, uh, if you feel like you've got a good fit, you can pick a plan, and, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, our plans start under $1,000 a year, we also offer monthly plans under $100 a month, um, and you can continue to grow your usage of the product as you go as well. Uh, so if you add more users, you can add them uh, month to month as you need to. Um, so it's a self-service solution. Uh, we do offer one-on-one demo. You can sign up for that on our website as well. There's a link to set up a product demo. We're happy to do that. But we feel that we built something that's so easy and intuitive that most people, and this is actually what we see, are able to jump in and get going and set, invite other users, their board members, their staff to join set up a meeting, invite them to the meeting, upload documents, send out an agenda, and it really walks you through that step-by-step. So uh, they can jump in and get going whenever they'd like to. And Jeb, I, I think another parallel for our audience is there are some people listening to the show that are planning out how they're going to become board directors. Some just want to sit on one, say, pro uh, for-profit board. Some might want a portfolio career some days. Another way that we talk about people getting experience is going the route of a nonprofit, uh, perhaps being a committee leader, eventually being a chair, and then you can use some of those stories and experiences as you prepare yourself for the next step. And part of that experience might be perhaps using a solution like Boardable to be 
prepared if you were to join, say, like a Coca-Cola board someday, and it would clearly be on another level, like we've talked about, but some similar experiences, which also prepare you. So uh, perhaps an unintended benefit for some of our audience. Absolutely. I think if you're going to end up on a corporate board, it's almost certain they would be using some sort of uh, board portal tool, uh, either home made, as some companies have, or uh, one of the, the big uh, the big companies like Diligence or um, you know, Board Advantage, which NASDAQ owns, that really work with publicly traded companies. And you'd see a lot of similarity between the products. Uh, again, if you're looking at a different level of security, you're looking at a different level of complexity around how you can uh, work on documents, collaborate on documents, but the overall general workflow would be very similar. Well, Jeb, I love what you guys are doing, which is why I wanted you on the show today, because we do have a lot of our audience who are just nonprofit, and they're just trying to give back and do well in the world, and we need more of that, because we, we want the nonprofits to succeed in everything that they're doing, and we need them to have the right board members with the right skill set. So we were delighted to have you on the show today. Thank you for sharing your insights and the work that you're doing and helping all of us to be boardroom bound. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to be on here, and, uh, and thank you for uh, the, the great question. That's it for this episode of Boardroom Bound. I really enjoyed chatting with Jeb Banner, and I am delighted to be sharing Boardable with you because nonprofits need some of the exact same tools and information and abilities that the public company boards have, but they need it at a more cost-efficient price. They don't need all the bells and whistles. And it's great to hear how Jeb's company has been responding to the needs of organizations and helping them to be at their best because all of us like myself who are on Boards of nonprofits want that. We want to be freed up and to be able to focus on the right thing. So congratulations to Boardable. Great work you guys are doing. Now remember to head over to podcast.gordon.edu where you can get links to all of the resources we talked about today. And please know that the Boardroom Bound team and I are so proud to be your go-to podcast for all things that connect, prepare, and empower you to land a board seat. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss any of the high-quality content that we're bringing to you every Wednesday. Thanks for joining me today. I can't wait to share more stories and strategies from brilliant business minds with you again next week. Remember to keep tuning in to be boardroom bound.